at a time when it's difficult to distinguish the real from the real she is someone who has made her mark on the internet based purely on authenticity and skills a travel enthusiast and animal lover and an actor that does not stop to surprise us with a range of roles that she plays she dabbled in acting while pursuing two degrees and that is why she is a perfect example of how you can follow your passion while not upsetting your parents and not compromising on your education you cannot leave her social media page without a smile on your on your face because that is the amount of positivity and love that she spreads through her content please join me in welcoming the queen of web series a stunning actor content curator and most of all a youth icon a role model to young india bartha sen to the third season of arman's role model series hi bartha introduction i mean you have the perfect uh, you know sunlight on your face yeah. you're just taking advantage of the golden hour it's literally just a window of sunlight wow. left <laughs> they sent me we got like hundreds of questions of uh, answer and on so we've shortlisted them and i'm going to ask you the first one the first one is um but you know everything that this generation gen z consumes like from fashion to current affairs from entertainment to education everything most of it comes from social media hmm. and this also includes um they are choosing of their role models that also comes through these reels right yeah. and a lot of young boys and girls they look up to you as a person they want to be be it your accomplishments or the way you carry yourself they want they aspire to be the next barkha singh oh god so god. out of everything that you've done your journey um you know who you've become today what is that one thing that you would like these young girls and boys to pick up from you um i think if it was one particular thing i have to say actually can i say two because yes, they both yes. have to go hand in hand okay so one one would be to like be safe because it does like take a certain amount of guts to put yourself out there and uh, i understand because i have also been there i understand like this kind of hesitation of thinking that oh, oh am i stupid doing this what will others think of me what will work what will not work so one i think we should just say like, uh, shed our inhibitions especially when it comes to what we really want to do and what we are passionate about one is that and two is you have to be persistent you know because we talk about the generation of today grown up on social media we are to in gratification we want every to show results immediately right so like we need to understand as people and as content creators or as actors everything is not going to happen overnight and you have to be consistent like even in my well, you know who are part of life just now some reels perform really well but not all reels perform well like every single thing can't perform well so if something doesn't perform well i can't sit back and be like oh god i'm going to stop creating content no i have to continue to create content and that actually takes a lot from you to keep going even in times when things are not going well so yeah just being persistent and like just putting yourself out there without thinking of what other people are going to say i think are two things that i would uh, really like to share with uh, the people who are aspiring to content creators it's so good to hear like a content curator talking about this generation of instant gratification because that is something that we see and this is something that you know kids are picking up from content curators but it's so good that coming from a content curator to say that you know it's not you not cannot get instant Hello. gratification yeah yeah like like nothing you want to sustain for a long time. it's like okay so let me give a hard for a uh, uh, content creation example okay. if you want to become a good content creator you have to create for yourself you have to find a way with which your audience connects to you right but i can also be a creator who does own sense so that will give me instant gratification i will immediately get a lot of followers but have they connected with me have i built a community you know that doesn't happen overnight that is a very long time so yeah that's one example real time real life example i'd like to give when we talk about thing is instant gratification ever i'm sorry i'm going to have my coffee so no no please do no that, that's great uh, because this is a generation of you know hustle culture and instant gratification so it makes sense and 
it is important that they realize that having the dream of becoming a content curator is not just glamorous there is so much of effort that goes behind it as well uh, so yeah um you know there's also especially your journey it's very unique usually people uh, who are content curators then shift to acting however for you it's been the other way around yeah. you were an actor and that uh, you know garnered a lot of love for and then they came to your social media page and you can you continued your acting while also pursuing content curation yeah. um i'm sure these are two different uh, career paths i mean both of them overlap do overlap but they do have some difference if given a chance which one would you choose if you I had to choose you were going to ask me that i was dreading i was like i'm going to ask you that <laughs> <laughs> that's the most unfair question ever asked It, you know, I tell you how it feels. It feels like someone's asking me, "Would you like to choose the left hand or the right hand?" Because because oh God. So, so early. Because I'm going to tell you something. Point: Only a stupid person is going to pursue two full-time jobs at one time. But that stupid person is the person who's stupidly in love with what they do, right? And that just you just like like just do it. So yeah, like that's how it acts because you meant. I just start acting, and I don't know how many people who are part of this life remember Girls on Top, MTV Girls on Top, or Solo had done uh, on MTV. It actually got me, you know, to be able to connect with a lot more people. That got, and this was back in 2000. So that's when, like, for my, like, I, I like, for where it was so good to me because before that I didn't even know what content is. So yeah, it's been a fun journey. <laughs> Yeah. It's you know the yeah. same answer. <laughs> okay, let's the go. Answer, the answer that you give for your career path is uh, the answer that parents give when we ask them who's your favorite child. Yeah, but it is so unfair. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Let's put it to younger kids. Uh, Jen, it's like um, the answer Gen Z kids give when asked between their AirPods and their phones. Oh God! <laughs> But I'm sure both of them have had a lot of uh, differences as well. What is more difficult? Yeah. Which one is more challenging for you? So jokes apart, um, uh, in terms of mentally, you know what? You really can't. Those no challenging projects are the same. You know, some are easier, some are closer to life. Like, That when I done, but something when I did like in Masaba, which is very far away from my personality, so that was obviously a little more challenging. There's something I'm working on just now, which is probably the most challenging acting gig I've ever done in my life. even content creation. You know, sometimes just making like fun time pass feels so easy. Something you you want to make a nice big big. But where the key lies to cut a long story short, where the key lies is to just strike a balance. Um, where you are able to. Multitask at the same time. So, like sometimes when I'm on set, but I can't laptop, I can't system. So either I shoot something or I edit something, or if I have like a concept note. So, like as long as you can keep multitasking, as long as you absolutely love it, it's very doable. It's very doable. Like I don't want to be something that's like, oh wow, how do you do it? How do you do it? It's really very doable. Like if you want to do it, set your mind, you can do it. You just have to be crazy enough to want to do both and love both of these things. Equally. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think that's another thing about people now. Uh, as you said, there's hustle culture. Everyone wants, everyone has life. You know, everyone really wants to make something of themselves. Especially like the kids who are under twenty. I wouldn't call them kids. I'd hate if someone called them. <laughs> But you get my point, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know you did mess. Uh, you did mention about your um, role in Masaba. So coming to your roles, how do you make a decision while choosing like an acting project? Is it more in terms of what interests you, or uh, do you also think from the point of view of how your audience will perceive you in that role? So um, when it's content, like if I'm creating content on for my Instagram. It is hundred percent based on what I feel is the case, because over a period of time, over a few weeks, 
what they like what they don't like what they are interested in the certain videos that only a niche audience is interested in they very want to do that so you have to videos also to cater to them as well right because they are following you as well so for content creation it's purely based on what the audience feel but for the for the acting bit i'm going to be very honest here you do some projects for the money you do some projects for the creative satisfaction it's as simple as that yeah that that's very honest yeah. and that's a good answer for right? people who want to pursue yes yeah and when i say creative satisfaction obviously it goes with the script you see who's making it who's the director what kind of a character is it am i able to break out of an existing mold by doing this character there are multiple things you take into account and there are certain times when like, okay this is paying me well and you're going to do it <laughs> that's as honest as i can be yeah no no of course um also a lot of the uh, you know because you have a pursued two degrees as well if you were not into entertainment do you see yourself in yes. some other field you're not using those degrees <laughs> <laughs> i i probably i have always stay interested in um, why is and uh, you know environmental or environment these programs so i'll probably be doing something relating to thing with either wildlife or conservation practices or something in that uh, space no no and we see you with with animals and everything that you uh, keep oh, yeah. putting up yeah. yeah um no um and this because this is a role model series i must ask you who is your role model in real life oh my role model in real life see i'll tell you something again very extremely honest and candid in this live session for some reason but um, i i have always struggled for this question because i've never had a particular role model like i like to believe that i am a good observer and i observe different things different people and i uh, you know fired by different qualities different people but i think like two people in constant throughout are obviously my parents they have a huge say and a huge role say in everything or uh, you know like the values that i have the work ethic that i have but yeah like it's difficult to say. i think you know anyone can be your role model anyone can inspire you nowadays like it's so difficult to put a finger on like you know, because also as you as you reach like a professional space things are not like they were in school in school if someone asked us this question we always had an answer to give okay, this person is my role model right but as you grow as you see more of the world as you experience more things which i'm sure you 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 i mean i don't know if that's true, but for me it is that like i i i feel and choose a lot of things that inspire me from different people so I my role model is this imaginary person i've created in my head that has all the qualities of different <laughs> no no and i'm you are a role model so to so many uh, young people uh, but it's so good that you know it's that's a very good uh, answer that you observe things from different people and combine them all together to do this imaginary person and it can be anyone you know it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be someone who is with things in life who's achieved big and as simple as if i'm having someone who's probably 13 years old you know and the person says something in that is something i take back from that kid could have to be yeah. i don't think we're at a day and age now where we need to have a particular person who's a be no 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 that that makes a lot of sense but um you know what who would be your role model in real in the sense that one character uh in movies or something which you'd be like i wish i had played it or i want to play it oh. something like that oh i will tell you um i don't think i have watched this show called queen's gambit that yes yes the that, the chess yeah the that one the chess one exactly that is a character like it and another one i've always is really wanted to play is from this film called gone girl if you watch this film called gone girl uh, like a, a little like wow yeah, but that, that's too dark <laughs> yeah but you know like that's what something i really wanted to do because i've done a lot of romance a lot of comedy a lot of sweet stuff 
so for me i was mentioning this earlier that to break out of your mold got to do so like for currently just now when i roll you make a gone girl or something it will be so much you know you the perfect uh, you know character for the girl next door and is right? somebody like you play someone like in the go- gone girl character would be so interesting and so unexpected so that would be really nice <laughs> yeah no no that that's great and i'm i'm sure uh, and i'm something like queen's gambit in india would be amazing amazing um you know i was hearing one of uh, your interviews one of the podcasts you've done and um, if i'm not wrong you did mention that you prefer content curator to influencer yeah vice right. like in a generation in a you know where everybody wants to be an influencer and then yeah. you who are an influencer saying that i would rather be a content curator and not an influencer the honestly at the end of the day these are just tags and labels that we give out that we give out other but like if if i have to deal so of it i don't know if i actually know the amount of influence i have right because there is no tangible indication of it so it doesn't feel right to be like i'm influencing everyone i'm an influencer what feels tangible to me is i create content that is what i do that is what i am 100% sure i do and that is what i'd like to call myself professionally that i'm a content creator now if that content influences people's decisions their choices their lifestyle that is a ripple effect that's a butterfly effect of me being a content creator but like when people say you're an influencer i think that this that boat how can we say how how do we have 100% credibility that i am to it but there is 100% credibility that i am creating content that is why i like being called a content creator and not an influencer you do the usool wali baat in a just you are too modest oh god <laughs> um but yeah because you are somebody like that what is your message to young india Yo, lo, lo. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be a role model. Very simple. Like follow your, follow your passion. But honestly, you only live once. So like, uh, and so circle back to what you started with in the beginning. Say, so just, like, if you want to do something, don't be scared to do it just because of what others will think. You have one life. So go ahead and do whatever it is your heart feels like you want to do because you don't want to. go back look back later and regret for not having done so rather regret not even rather say for this decision is not wrong you should bear the consequences of it than sit back and regret that oh shit i should have done something like that and now you can't do it anymore so just like go there you have one do what you have more like jas more than jas jas zero fee zindagi yeah that yeah basically <laughs> they will they will resonate uh, with it much more than any other big advice that you are giving <laughs> um no this is this is not coffee with karan but we have adopted that uh, <laughs> uh one word uh, yes <laughs> so coffee with barkha what is that one word that comes to your mind when i say content relatable fashion comfortable bollywood love india home and i am on this platform inspiring sweet so sweet inspiring uh, and it was it was such a pleasure to host it's always so good to have you know young people who we can project as role models for these uh because we do have a lot of accomplished people who are you know in their 40s 50s but to have somebody young who we can say yes this is a good role model for young india it's it's always such a pleasure and thank so, so i'm so glad that you did this whole live session thank you so much thank you so much bye guys it's a pleasure all right bye bye